I'd like to read some scripture to begin my thoughts with today from the book of Psalms. It's a passage of scripture that I uh, have studied many times, read many times, shared with many pastors, with classes for the district when they would have me take time to share things with pastors in classes. And I'll read it to you here in Psalm 78, verses 70 through 72. It's really, I would say, it's David's calling to ministry. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands. That word skillful there means in the Hebrew, with wisdom, he led them. There's about five or six things that's in there that David did that was part of what his job would be from tending animals to tending to people. The, the analogy of the sheep being God's people. When I was an infant, I was introduced to church. My folks were always there, so I found myself being very useful. And between the naps on the floor during preaching time, I found out that when I slept during church as a little boy, it was better than when I'm home in case I got the look from the pastor because I was carrying on in church. Because that also happened. And we, I had a couple spankings over the years when I got home from church because I was acting up. But God got me for that. He put me in the ministry to pay me back. <laughs> My folks were always there, as I said. And I remember at a very young age that, and some of you know this, but many of you don't because you're new. But I would, uh, after church, I would go through the foyer of the church and I would pick up the coat hangers that people would let fall on the floor when they took their coats on. And they would let bulletins fall on the floor, little pieces of paper, and I would pick that stuff up. And I'd put the coat hangers back up, pick up the paper, put in the trash can. And I would, I would go into the sanctuary and I would, it was, it was theater seating, so I would go in, I would pick up all the seats. Because I reasoned that when people come to church, if the seats are up, they don't have to slide like this. They can actually just walk in and have a seat. So I, on my own, I just figured out, why not make it easy for people to, to sit in the seat? <laughs> so I, I grew to love being in church. Little did I know that God was preparing me. I was actually already practicing my calling. Didn't know it. Door to door, inviting people to church, picking up kids on the church van. I'd go with the van captain and pick up kids. We went to nursing homes. We went to hospitals. I was in the youth group. I was an officer in the youth group. I was in the church choir by the age of 12, helping to clean the church. I was on the quiz team. I went to prayer meetings. I was, was always involved in something. In fact, I tried something for one year in high school, for one year. We had church Wednesday night. We had church Sunday night, Sunday morning. And Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, they always had testimony time. Well, for one solid year, I wanted to see if I had something I could testify about. Could I find at least one thing for one solid year? Every Wednesday night and every Sunday night they had testimonies. I was able to, for one solid year, get up and share something God had done was awesome. Which, by the way, taught me a lesson. There is always something God does. There's always something God is doing if we'll pay attention and look at it and see it. I remember doing that for a solid year. And after that, of course, I would testify. Um, I remember drawing a picture of a pastor in the pulpit on a Sunday night right in the middle of the sanctuary. We didn't have an aisle down the middle, so right there in the middle, uh, I drew a picture of our pastor while he was teaching on Sunday nights. And in my heart, I thought, you know, Lord, I was fifth or sixth grade. It'd be so cool. What if I could be like that one day? What if I could stand before a congregation and I could preach and teach? Because he was a great teacher. 
And I thought it'd be so cool. So I'm drawing this picture, imagining it would be me. Well, you know, um, the Lord punished me for drawing during the Sunday night service. That's the second time I got punished by the Lord. He said, you know, if you're going to sit there and draw pictures, then I'm going to put you in the ministry and let you see what it's like. So here I am. I'm in a junior year in high school, and I'm walking across our classroom to go to my seat. As vividly as I stand in this pulpit today, as vividly this happened. As I'm walking to my seat, because I've been talking with my art teacher about a career in commercial art. God gave me the talent to draw. And so um, I was thinking about that, where I could go to school, and the Lord spoke to me, walking across the room, and he said, in not an audible voice, but in a spiritual audible voice, he said, you're going to Bible school. Well, I knew right then and there that what was happening to me when I was in fifth and sixth grade and on Sunday night with that burning desire, that burning desire and craving really was my calling. I just had it confirmed when I was a junior in high school. Just had it confirmed. That day, my calling was to be in the ministry. Somebody gave this to me because it said, I said I, I, it looks like me so much. A ball head. <laughs> glasses over the nose. Some hair on the side. And a, just a tad bit chubby. <laughs> and they gave it to me. Pastor, they said, I couldn't resist this, but I saw it, it looks just like you. And I just want you to know, this is the most handsome devil I've ever seen right here. <laughs> so I found something very interesting and amazing that everything I felt like I would do or would like to have done in the ministry, I, I just felt like, wow, Lord, it'd be cool to be a youth pastor. Lord, it'd be cool to do counseling. And, and I had this list of things I thought would be so beautiful to do. And I thought, I don't know, though. It's me. I don't know, Lord. Do you know that everything I wanted to be, wanted to do, had a desire to do that, that now I know was from the Lord, all came to pass. When I have stood before you these years and I've told you that it's the Lord that has made me who I am, with the faults that I have in my handful, I can be at times, I'm sure. But everything that I have become has been because of the faithfulness of God. Because I know me. I know my limitations. But I know his uh, unlimited ability can work through us. And help us to become who he wants us to become. Now, after 48 years in the ministry, 40 of them here in mid, from mid-October, 40 years ago, this coming mid-October, actually 14th, uh, we will have been here for 40 years at Calvary. Now, you got to be careful how you respond to this next one because I could take that clap a wrong way. <laughs> Here it is. Officially today, I will be transitioning. I know once I say this, it's out. But I'm going to be transitioning from pulpit to pew. I love you too. <laughs> now, I took that in the right way. Oh, goody, finally. We're being delivered from the 40 years of the desert. I thought about Moses. I am not unfamiliar with lay ministry, though. For the first 22 years of my life, I was a lay person doing everything I could to take our church forward as a young person, as a child. Now I'm returning to the pew. Lord willing, I will be sitting in the pew with you, alongside of you, doing the kingdom work together with you. 
My wife and I have talked. We're not going to be sitting in a pew in Merlo Beach. We will vacation there. We're not going to be sitting in a pew in the church in Tennessee. We will be vacationing there. But we will be Lord willing, and we're hoping and trusting God that we're going to be sitting right beside you in this church. Hoping to take this church before us. I think it's important for you to know, very important, from this mouth to your heart, that I promise you before God, there's not a human being, there's not a human being on the face of this earth who's had anything to do with this decision. This was prompted, guided, and confirmed by God himself. The Lord and I we're buddies and we spent a lot of time together I know without a doubt not even with my wife's influence my family's influence no one's I want to assure you that God is leading this he's in this it's God who'd call me to the pulpit so why wouldn't it be God who would call me back to the pew why wouldn't he do that and so we're doing that. God has, has this covered. Let me tell you something about God. He called us here almost 40 years ago. It'll be 40 years at, at the mid of October this year. I'll be, by the way, I'll be 70 in October. I don't feel like I'm 70. My knees feel like 100. <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm 70. I had a great workout at the gym last night. I can still do it at 70. I just know that the timing is correct. Um, When we came to Calvary, there were 60 people total, including children. 40 years later, he has, for those of you that may not know this, he has guided us into three building programs, a purchase of a furniture store, and let me tell you something. (laughs) Oh, my. That... These facilities are busy facilities. These facilities are an instrument and a tool of God. And you're the people that work it. But these, are, these buildings are a tool of God that have changed countless of hundreds of lives. So here's my question. With all that God has done, do you think for one minute that God is done? Even though I'm transitioning, do we think God is going to be done? Okay, pastor's been here and Angela, and he has done what he's done. Now, we're, now we plateau. Now we, let, let me tell you what's, and the, by the way, the board and myself have been, preparing for this for a year or more. So this is not a surprise to the board. We've been preparing for all of this. And so you know, if we've been preparing this for about a year or so, you know, what, you see what God has done. So just so far this year, you need to know something, that we're at 158 salvations this year. Four of those happened Friday night at the praise night. I tell you what, what a church service we had Friday night. We had church. (laughs) You ready for this? Baptized 41 people. That's, That's 66 people so far this year. And so far this year, we've added already 71 members. Doesn't sound like God's taking a break to me, sister and brother. It sounds like he's got a, a mission. He's got a vision that he's keeping alive through all of us. And he's going to continue to keep that. Listen, I, I actually told my wife, I said, and I know this is going to sound crazy when you go from 60 people to over uh, Sandy Jacobson told me that we have over 4,000 people that we connect with about for this church. Over 4,000 on our database. 
Over 4,000 people. Imagine if they all showed up on Sunday. <laughs> and here's the thing. It's like God's only just begun. It's only like he's just begun. You can anticipate. If God can do this in 40 years, think what he's going to do should he tarry the next 40 years. Wow. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When God transitioned Moses, he raised up another leader, and they continued to move forward. Why? Ready? Because this is God's work. It's never been Pastor Kuhn's work. <laughs> right, team? It's always been God's work together as a team. This was never, again, my church. It was our church. I just happened to be called from the sheep pens, as it were, and appointed by God. My wife and I said to each other more than once recently, said it again this week at supper time, we were in awe of God. We said, hon, imagine God could have called any man and woman to come to this church in this country or around the world to pastor this church, but he chose us. How humbling and how awesome that is. But we're very humbled that he chose us. He didn't have to choose us. He happened to choose us. That's, he hired me through the body of Christ. Your blessing. Do you think that God would do all this and then walk away now? Never. He's got huge plans for you folks. And together, from pulpit to pew, we are going to discover them together. Amen? Amen. Amen.